So today's topic is decision making. If you see in your life, we take decisions daily. Like uh, what are the important tasks that we have to complete today? If there's Sunday, we decide to go for shopping. Or say if you are going out and if there's cloudy, we take decision to carry umbrella. So daily we take decisions. In the same way, we take decision in programming. Like if you are creating an app and a user access your app. So first authorization is checked whether the user ID and password is correct or not. So here we are taking decision if user ID and password is correct user is allowed to access his account or if the user ID and password is incorrect uh, a message given to the user he has entered wrong user ID and password right. So there is also a decision now in the same way if you are working on a UPI app or if you are developing a banking app and we, when the user is transferring some amount in this case also as a programmer you have to take the decision whether the amount should be debited from his account or he is not allowed to transfer. Say if the amount that he, the user is transferring is exceeding the daily limit, in that case you will not debit the amount. In that case you will give the message to the user the amount is exceeding the specified limit, right? So while programming you have to take this type of decisions. And if you notice in all of these decisions we have to check some conditions. If you see in the first case we are checking the condition whether the login and password match to the specified login password or not. Or in second case, we are checking the condition whether the transfer amount is less than 10,000 or not, right? So we have to check conditions and conditions are checked with the relational operators. We, we also use logical operators and membership operators and identity operators too. We will understand these membership operators later when we study about the collection data types, right? But till then you can understand that membership operators are used to check whether the specified object is present in the given object or not, right? And identity operators are used to check whether the ID of two objects are same or not. ID here means the memory address. So we have to check whether the memory address of both the objects are same or not. In that case, we use identity operators. So we'll see in the coming videos these membership and identity operators. Till then, you can understand that both of these operators give result in true or false. Or we can say in Boolean. All of these operators, relational, logical, membership and identity operators give result in true or false, right? Because whenever we have to take decision, we take decision based on the some condition. If that condition is true, we take some decision. If that condition is false, we take some other decision, right? So that's why while taking decision, we have to check conditions and for checking condition, we can use any of these operators that result in true or false, right? So we can check conditions through these operators. But how to take decision? We take decision through if elif else conditional statements. So how do we use these if elif conditional statements? Let's see the syntax. First we have to use the if keyword here and then we have to mention the condition. Here condition could be anything. Here condition could be whether the password is equal to equal to the specified password or not right then we have to use this colon symbol right so this is compulsory and after this colon on the next statement first you have to give some space this space is mandatory after this space you have to write the statement or the decision that you are going to take when this condition is true so let's see this say we have to check the password if password is correct we have to print the welcome message to the user Right. So for this what we have to do first we have to use the if keyword and then we have to use the condition right here we are using the equal to equal to relational operator and we have to check whether the password is correct or not if the password is 1 2 3 4 5 then that means this condition is true right when this condition is true the python interpreter will move inside and execute this statement right so here we are using this space this space is called indentation this indentation tells us that this statement is written inside this if. When this if condition is true, only then the interpreter will move inside and execute this statement. Let's say this condition is false, right? So when this condition is false, now the interpreter will not go inside. It will exit this if statement and move after this if statement. But if you have written some statement here, then that statement will get executed. Otherwise, the program will end here, right? But let's say if the password is wrong, then you want to take a decision. What is that decision? You want to give message to the user that you have entered wrong password. You can try one more time, right? So for that, what we can do? Now for this, we can use if-else conditional statement. 
so here else means that when this if condition falls then the python interpreter jump to this else and whatever written inside this will get executed so this means that between if and else only one will get executed if this condition is true then this statement will get executed and the interpreter will move outside this if else right and if this condition is fails in that case it will jump to this else and this statement will get executed and then interpreter will move outside so in that case this will not get executed now let's see how to use this now here we are checking the password so if this password is correct if this statement is true then the interpreter will move inside and run this statement right and then the program will end here or we can say it will move outside this if else right but let's say if it is false in that case it will jump to this else and whatever written here will get execute right so that means only one get execute either if or else so here we are using only one condition but let's say we are using two condition we are checking login and password too. now in this case we can combine these two conditions using and operator right now this becomes one condition we can call this condition a compound condition right so if this condition is true so when this condition will be true when this is also true and this is also true in that case the result of this compound condition will be true if this is true that means the interpreter will move inside and run this statement but let's say if this is false when it will get false if one of these is false let's say this password is false when one of these two condition is false then this and operator will give us the false result right so the result of this compound condition will be false in that case the interpreter will jump to this else and whatever written inside will get executed so that means one of these if and else will get executed right either if get executed or the else get executed depend on this condition if this condition is true that means if will get executed if this condition is false then that else will get executed but let's say for example if login is correct but password is failed in that case i want to give the user message you have entered wrong password right here we don't know which is wrong whether user id is wrong or password is wrong right but we know that one of this is wrong that's why we have got false condition right so in that cases we can use nested if right so what is nested if if we use if statement under some other if statements right so this is nested if say here we are checking the login id if this login id is correct that means if this is true we will move inside right here we are using again if else now in this if else we are checking the password so if the password is true again we are using indentation here that means the interpreter will move inside and execute welcome right but say if this password is false right that means login id is true but password is false now in that case the interpreter jump to this else and here we have written incorrect password right so this message will get displayed let's say in starting if this if condition fails right when this is false that means it will not move inside it will jump to this else here we have written incorrect login id so this will get executed so this is how we use nested if we can also use multiple if statement say if we had to take multiple decisions if you see in all of these except this if case in all of these if else conditions we are taking only two decisions say if this is correct we will take this decision if this is false we will take this decisions only two decisions are taken here we can see if this login id and password is correct we will decide to print welcome if this condition is fails we will decide to print incorrect user id and message on the screen so we are taking only two decisions but say if we have to take multiple decisions more than two decisions in that case we use multiple if else statements so here we are taking three decisions right obvious we will take decisions on different conditions so now let's see the example say we have to compare a b and c right so, and we have to print the smallest number right so here a is smaller when a is smaller than b and c and b is smaller when b is smallest than a and c right and c is smallest when this is smallest than a and b so here there are three conditions right how we can use this first we can use this condition where we are checking whether a is smallest than b and c if this is true then 
we can find here the indentation that means interpreter will execute this statement right so when this is true that means it will get execute but let's say if it is false now in this case the interpreter will jump to the next elif it will not go inside right here again we have provided a condition now this condition is checked if this is true that means the interpreter will move inside and this print statement will get execute now let's say if this condition also fails in that case the interpreter will not move inside it will jump to the next else and whatever written inside that will get execute that means neither a is smallest nor b is smallest so this means that c is the smallest so that's why we have directly print the c is smallest right you can see that when we are using else there is no need to provide condition here so this else will get execute only when above if elif conditions fails right so we can see that only one condition will get execute the condition which is true here you can see that when both of these condition fails only then this will get execute right and when this will get execute then the both of this will not get execute right so any one of this if elif conditions will get execute right and one thing more you can use multiple elif conditions say we are having five variables right now we have to check the smallest of these five variables now for three variables there are two conditions right and for five variables there must be four conditions so here again we can write one more elif that will check for c whether c is smallest than a b d and e and after that again we can write one more elif that will check d whether d is smallest than a b c and e right when all of these four condition fails in that case this else will get executed right so we can use multiple elif conditions that depends on the decisions how many decisions we are taking right now let's get to python and understand this if elif conditions with the help of a practical example let's create a program in which we ask the user his age and on the basis of that age we can decide whether the user is a child adolescent adult or a senior citizen right or whether he has entered a wrong age or not right so here we have to take multiple decisions that means we have to use multiple elif statements so now let's start creating program now first we have to create a variable in which we ask the user his age now we have used this input function into int function because age is a number so we have to convert it into integer now we use if elif statement we have to compare whether age is greater than equal to 0 and age is less than equal to 12 right so if age is between 0 and 12 then that means the user is a child so we can print right you are a child now let's check second condition if the age is greater than equal to 12 and age is less than equal to 19 that means user is an adolescent right but sometimes creating program we use new if statement so now what's the difference between these two ifs this means that this if statement doesn't depend on the result of the previous if statement right if this condition is true or false no matter this condition will get checked so that means if user has entered 12 then this will execute so this statement will get printed right but now after printing this statement interpreter must check this condition also because this is a new if condition here again check if this is false then if you write again if statement then also it get checked but if you have written l if here that means if this condition is right so if user has entered 12 then this will get execute but after that no elif will not get executed right after printing this the interpreter move out of this if elif statements right so this is the difference between if elif and only ifs now let's check another condition so here if age is greater than equal to 20 uh, sorry here we have to write 13 and age is less than 60 that means user is an adult right 
now let's say again we have to check whether a is, is greater than equal to 60 and a valid a is, is i think up to 120 right we can print you are a senior citizen right now if elif condition fails in that case we can print the user has entered wrong age right now if we run this program now we have to enter the age let's say we have entered 45 now you are an adult now if we run it again so let's say this time we entered 19 now that means you are an adult now if we run it again let's say we write some negative number so this times we have entered a wrong age now let's say if we entered 5 that means you are a child right if we run it again and let's say we entered 35 135 now that means we have entered it invalid age right so this is how we use if value statements i hope you have understood this now that's it for now i'll see you in the next video